Okay, folks, I'm sorry about that. We difficulty are just an issue with sound. Um, as I said there, we'll have uh, any questions throughout the presentation. Don't be afraid just to put them into the chat box and some of the lads can answer them. And then at the end, we can, if anyone has anything else, um, I'll let you turn off the mic and ask the question then at the end, okay? So we get going. Look, hopefully we'll not keep you too long, 25 minutes, half an hour, and we'll have got through most of the, the presentation, okay? So the outcomes of today's uh, webinar, I suppose, were looking for the benefits of proper nutrition and hydration, um, different types of foods, fluids, et cetera, required for fuel and performance, um, when and what goes for training, rest days for games, what will benefit them the most, and then specific challenges for teenage players. Like um, there's probably not too many young lads or young girls that are cooking for themselves or maybe there are at the moment but usually it's mommy or daddy or whoever's at home so look I'm not going to be telling parents how or what they should be cooking for their, their son or daughter exactly but we're just hopefully giving a few points on um, what will help benefit performance and I suppose development over the over the teenage years okay um, so firstly I suppose the benefits of proper nutrition and hydration look the key one we're looking for is to improve performance that's on and off the field I suppose from if it's in a game or training or if it's just general in, in school or whatever it is in life that that's going on at the minute <clears throat> so the benefits I suppose from it are a decrease in recovery time so recover faster after a tough training session or a game or whatever it is um, increase in energy so that can be applied to sports situations or just general everyday life and um, increase in muscle development i suppose this is a key one at this age group as teenagers develop they're developing at a rapid rate and nutrition can have a massive effect and positive effect on how they're developing so it's it's really key and i don't think lots of people probably don't value it enough that how big of an effect it can have on the on the teenager as they're developing okay increase in stamina so it's basically what that is that they can work at a higher intensity for longer if it's in game situations or whatever that they're not fatiguing as quickly um, a decrease in body fat so I suppose you have lots of different body types for different types of people so you're probably trying to keep as trim as possible for when you're playing a field sport like Gaelic football or hurling that you can have your body in as good a condition as possible for for the games improved health so that's keeping flus and that type of thing away that your nutrition can have a massive effect on that which is really beneficial I suppose for keeping you training all the time because if you're missing training every couple of weeks for different things a lot of the time it can fall back that it's it's nutrition that's letting your body down but it hasn't enough vitamins and minerals or whatever to to keep the body okay and then the last one I suppose is prevent prevent cramping okay so the five key things are fluids carbohydrates proteins fats uh, vitamins and minerals okay so we go through each one of these as a heading what it is what types of food it in and how it can benefit benefit um, the body okay so first one we'll go to is fluids okay so um this is probably more so just something to get into the routine and the habit of teenagers to probably guilty a lot of the time and lots of people for not drinking enough water or only drinking it when they think they're starting to get a headache or they're starting to feel a wee bit dehydrated and not just sipping away at a bottle of water all the time okay so it's a good habit for for teenagers to get in to bring a bottle of water with them to school or obviously at the moment with all the rules and regulations around COVID everyone has probably got used to bringing their own water to training sessions or games which is a massive positive because it's not relying on someone else to always have it there for you and then the obvious ones of not spreading different things germs or flus or whatever if everyone's drinking out of their own water bottle so that's definitely one positive that's come out of COVID okay and um, they're aiming to drink at least two liters of water a day look I suppose it probably varies from training days and recovery days and what's going on but 
two litres should be the min- minimum of what someone is trying to get into their body. It's not necessarily a target that if you're low or if you haven't drank as much water today that you're going to bed and you're putting a litre and a half into your body because obviously that's not going to be good. It's going to upset your rhythm or your sleep. So it's just trying to consistently over the day get the two litres or plus into the into your body, okay? Um, drinking fluids before, during and after exercise are massive for helping prevent dehydration, okay? So lots of time people are preparing their body before the session or before the game and drinking water during the game and then after it to forget about it straight away or just oh, I don't need to do that now or it's probably the key time to replenish your system and get get lots of water into the body so that's probably when you're most a chance of of being dehydrated okay um carbohydrates and electrolytes will improve fluid retention and improve hydration and uh, rehydration okay so something like a lucid sport or um a power aid is very high in electrolytes that after a session that might be used for replenishment but there's lots of natural ways through your food of getting those into your body as well which we'll go through in the next in the next couple of slides so we'll just move on from that so how will dehydration affect the body I suppose if I threw this if this was in person I threw it out to the floor everyone would probably between us all we get the different answers of what we're looking for so just basically a couple we have up here are uh, reduced decision making skills okay so the brain isn't functioning properly if you're dehydrated it's a wee bit slower maybe to pick up on different things so that's why it's very important to be hydrated before we go out for exercise or for the game uh, reduced coordination so obviously if our body isn't coordinated we might miss the chance we might miss the ball miss our shot miss the tackle whatever it is so that's another reason why it's so important okay like these things might seem very simple, but they do have a huge effect on how performance is in a match, okay? Irritability. So probably there's lots of different people and different traits that people have. There's some people are more irritable than others, but if it's something that not being properly hydrated is going to have a player in that state that maybe they bite or they say back to the referee or something, it can, this can have an effect on it in a player they're just not focused as much on the game if their body isn't isn't up up to standard on these couple of bits okay um nausea and vomiting okay so this is probably the extreme end of of being dehydrated and the effect it can have i'd say a lot of people have especially on warm days throughout the summer and championship games have seen young players coming off the field and they're not feeling the best or they're getting sick it's generally down to something to do with nutrition or dehydration that the players like that and probably the thing of I'm saying getting into the routine of just doing it every day is going to stop a, a case like this coming out okay and um, dizziness that's probably the same as nausea, nausea and vomiting it's as a result of not being properly hydrated headaches and weakness okay so the last thing <clears throat> we want to play our during the game is getting weak or feeling any of those other symptoms that they're sick or anything because straight away their mind isn't on the game and naturally enough you're probably a lot more concerned about their health then than the game is just a second thought after that so that's why it's really key to be to be on top top of these sort of things so just a wee chart here <clears throat> i suppose we've probably all seen this before on how young athletes can check if they're properly hydrated or not probably a word of advice would be to have a wee chart like this you find them on and we we'll put it up on Twitter and that afterwards anyway, but you'll find them on any of the of the GA websites. Um, no harm to have them in the clubhouse or in the bathrooms, just that it, it's a, a guide, I suppose, for the players that they know what the target range. So obviously numbers one, two, and three along the, the left-hand side of the, the screen is the target range that a player will know if they're hydrated or not. If we're down in the lower end of things, six, seven, or eight, the player or young person definitely isn't in a situation to be able to never mind go out and perform to their highest ability. They're probably not in a situation to go out and play at all if if they're down that far because their body's definitely not in the correct state to be to be exercising, okay? So ideally we're looking for one, two and three and that's probably just where a chance where you as a parent or a coach can educate them that these are the wee signs they can be looking out for. <clears throat> 
so just a couple of tips to avoid dehydration um, drink 200 to 600 ml of fluid in the two hours before exercise so that's just to, to tip up the system to make sure that we're on top of that drink 125 to 150 ml of fluid every 15 to 20 minutes during exercise I suppose that's not the easiest thing in the world to, to keep track of just the fact that there's water breaks and that in, in GEA it's just an opportunity for to get a bit of water on board like if we start going into the minor details of have you drank your 125 ml of water in the last 20 minutes I suppose we're losing the whole thought and the concept of the football side of the, the game okay but it's just that's just a gauge of what we're looking what your, your body should be looking what your athlete should be looking to take in and then the key one is replace lost fluid after exercise okay so 500 ml of fluid or water straight after the game should be just straight away done by each player as one of the things to tick off in the recovery that's the first step on the recovery for the next training session or next game if we miss that then straight away we're behind on all the other steps that we're looking to tick off which we'll get to um further on in the present presentation okay so the next heading we're on to is carbohydrates okay so carbohydrates provide us with the energy we need to perform on the pitch they are required before during and after sport and should not be neglected so i suppose all of these different ones we're going to go through are key at all times before during and afterwards some more so in different situations but carbohydrates are required throughout examples would include bread cereals rice pasta fruit and veg okay so i'll go through in a couple of minutes different types of carbs that are are more important for before and after after games and um, the next one is protein so protein is probably one of the most talked about things for athletes and sports people and how we can get it into our body so a couple of tips just coming up protein is the building block of muscle okay it's essential for maintenance growth and recovery so again it's if we look at it in that it's probably more so it's very important throughout our whole diet and throughout our whole week but it's very important after we exercise so once the muscle is broken down we're trying to build that muscle back up again so that's why protein is so important at that stage of activity if consumed in proper quantities it will spare muscle breakdown so basically if it's if we're not consuming enough protein in our diet and our athletes are at the teenage years where they're starting to develop and starting to put on more muscle mass if if we're not replaced or repairing the muscle that's been broken down with proper quantities of protein the body's just going to naturally break down more and more it needs to be keep keep being built built back up so examples of protein i suppose lots of you probably are well aware are chicken red meat and dairy products they probably of food sources are probably the most high in protein that we can that we can get into our bodies okay next one we're going to move on to our fats so fats are probably something that people think if you're talking about diets or what type of diet you should be on when you hear the word fat you're probably thinking oh no it shouldn't be part of it but fats play a huge role in improving our performance okay obviously there are lots of good fats and bad fats so training games lasting more than one hour and quite require energy from fat stores okay so we'll not go too deep into that but basically anything that's that's shorter than that we might not dig our body might not need to dig into those stores but anything that's lasting longer than that especially for teenagers that are <clears throat> you may be doing lots of different sports or have a couple of training sessions in the day so one activity might not last longer than the hour but if you're going to a second training session or something that evening your body isn't fueled properly those stores might may start to be used and as a result then our body's going to start breaking down as well so if your diet is too low in fats it may hinder your performance naturally enough with all these things if if, you're, if your diet's too low in any of them it's, it's definitely going to hinder your performance however fats should be avoided before training and games as they're slow to digest so basically what we're talking about there is in the we'll get to it later on but the window before games where we're fueling up our body fats are probably something they're slower to digest digest so they're your body's having to work harder to get them into its system which is naturally taking away energy before before a game or training session 
So if we we start going through of what the different types of meals and what's important what's important for improving performance, okay? So when and what to eat at breakfast time, okay? So breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You've been fasting overnight, so you need to ensure that you break this fast, okay? So it's a very important meal, but it's not necessarily any important, more important than your lunch or your dinner or anything like that, because it it's kind of a flawed statement that, well, if you eat breakfast, then you're kind of sorted for the day. But if you don't if look after the rest of your meals, then really eating the breakfast is, it's not really aiding you that too well, okay? So ideas for breakfast would include porridge with milk and honey, um, cereals and toast, uh, toast, eggs and beans, fruit, fruit juice and smoothie. Okay, so sorry, just go back to that for a, a wee second. Um, probably at breakfast time is is key that we don't lots of people neglect getting enough protein into their into their body okay that it's it kind of results kind of results in not being set up properly for the day so i know i have a couple of having in there but if if possible that we can get um say like bacon medallions and um eggs into our body at that time of the day look it might take a wee bit more prep the night before or just getting into the routine of having those sort of things but protein is definitely something that we need to look getting more into our into our diet um sorry i'm just going to stop sharing the screen here for a wee second bear with me Just bear with me, folks, for a second. The screen just froze here on me. So another good example, sorry, we're back to back to the stage I was at, um, would be pancakes or something probably that are easy enough to make up. We could have made up from the night before. Um, raisin pancakes that are a very good source of getting getting protein into our body as well. All right. So we just click on to the next one. So a big one now for our for improving our performance would be the pre-match meal. Okay. So a pre-match meal isn't racing out the door for a game at at, at one o'clock and wolfing food into us at half eleven it's it's two to four hours on this but preferably four hours before before the game you're looking to get your pre-match meal into your body that it is time to actually get into your system if it's any later than that if it's an hour or so before the game it's going to have no effect other than possibly it's a lot harder to digest and it's taking energy away from from your body then okay so your meal should consist it should be mainly carbohydrate based okay low in fat as i said earlier the fat is the hardest thing to digest so that's going to take away from our energy stores for the game something that's not too filling i suppose that different players have i suppose everyone's a wee bit different that some people do be a wee bit nervous or whatever before games and don't like eating a heavy meal that may be sitting in their stomach okay so it's probably trial and error for something like that that if you are that type of person that may be nervous or whatever whatever way it affects you before the game find what is good for your body and what helps you perform the best that you're not filling up and then being the person maybe that's a wee bit sick or something before the game that you haven't got too much in you because that's definitely going to affect affect your performance then um include a drink so as i said something like a fruit drink or a smoothie is high in carbohydrates as well so it's probably a good thing to get into our body it's liquid but it has so much good added benefits to it okay it might not be just as heavy on the stomach um and then in the two hours before the match um eat snacks to top up your energy so we're looking for things here that are light and maybe aren't going to lie around in our stomach so something like banana jaffa cakes jelly uh, sweets so wine gums or whatever they're all high carb in carbohydrates that aren't going to sit in our stomach for too long and 
look, probably not eating too many of the sweets as well before the game, but just something to keep keep you going and uh, topping up the energy reserves. So then the key one, the big one, I suppose, is post-match recovery. Lots, and I know for teenagers it may not be the easiest thing in the world because they're not always the person that's making their meals. It may It's more than likely somebody at home. And look, it could be a case that if you're a parent or a coach yourself, you could have several other things, job or other kids, different things going on in your life that it's not always ideal to have something ready, but just, I suppose, being prepared to have the... It's on the athlete as well to have the post-match recovery to start ticking off those boxes. The our, our nutrition is key to that, okay? So the main aim is to replenish glycogen stores to repair muscle damage, okay? Um, we're aiming for three protein and carbohydrate feedings post-match to begin recovery, all right? So, for example, if we start breaking that down, immediately after the game, uh, a chocolate milk, so have more protein milk or just... And you know, just a glass of milk with Nesquik or whatever, just thrown into it. A pint of milk is just as good, okay? Um, our post match meal might be something like spaghetti bolognese, so we're getting the carbohydrates back into our body, proteins again. Um, and then I know it sounds like an awful lot of eating, but a pass the bake or something before bed because when, when we're asleep, then after um, activity like a game or a hard training session, that's when our body's going to start repairing the muscle damage the most while we're asleep so having something fuel in your body is only going to aid that if we have nothing if we haven't had anything since the game other than maybe our our chocolate milk our body has nothing to draw and then to start replenishing those stores so then straight away it's going to start dipping into the fat stores again which in turn isn't going to help aid our muscle breakdown it's going to just break our body down more and more over over time so high gi carbs can benefit post-match recovery in several ways so it increases the speed of glycogen replenishment. They're easier to consume and can improve sleep. Okay, so I suppose all the time we're looking for the, the things that are, are the easiest to eat. After a game, it might not necessarily be the most appetizing thing to sit down in front of a big steak dinner. So something like a chicken stir fry or a spaghetti bolognese might be a wee bit easier just to get into, into your body. And then improve sleep because when we're asleep after these sessions, is when our body's going to recover the most okay and the fastest so next one just as i'm talking about we'll move on to sleep and recovery so good quality sleep is a vital factor in recovering after games and improving all-round performance okay a number of ways to maximize maximize the benefits of sleep we're looking to get eight to ten hours of sleep a night so if it's a school night or whatever it's not sitting up all night till 12 or one o'clock it's this is the dear these are the key times to get to bed early that our body can start recovering okay reduce caffeine and sugar intake so things like coffee lots of sugary sweets before we go to bed are going to keep us up later our sleep isn't going to be as good if we can get to sleep at all after consuming things like that okay so i suppose it's definitely a big no or not a big no but a lot of times stopping off at places like mcdonald's and things for uh, sugary f- um, feed or whatever coke or fanta something like that is going to have a huge effect on our sleep that night so it's just going back to the point of having the food for after the game or training prepared if possible that it stops us from then snacking on these types of things if we're prepared we're more likely not going to snack on these kind of things all right Um, having a consistent bedtime and wake up time so i suppose when it's the school year and things like that, it's a lot easier to, to stay in that routine of going to bed at 10, 11 o'clock at night and obviously you're getting up then for school the next morning. So we're targeting to get our 8 to 10 hours sleep. So if it's if it's 8 hours, that's optimal for, for the body to recover, okay? So just getting into that routine of consistently, if we're looking to perform and get get to the next level, these these small things can have a huge effect, okay? So questions, I suppose, for players that you as a coach or a parent can maybe could ask them is how can you identify issues and challenges um, you're faced in achieving good nutrition? So look, lots of them are in their hands, but a lot of them are probably going to be out of their hands as well. So just a couple of things that we would have got back from doing things like this with, with squads over the years would have been do 
that players would say maybe school meals or lunch choices might be an issue or a challenge. Um, bedtime, so getting to getting into that routine of sleeping and uh, knowing what to eat and when to eat it. Okay, so it's probably just the solutions to those things, I suppose. The first one, the school meals and lunch choices would be being prepared is probably the big one that if it's the night before or whatever or the week before that you're you're lining up basically of when and where you're going to get get these meals okay and um, possibly talking about good food choices at home with parents between the player or the parent if it's or the coach or whoever and um, if discussing these things and i know it's not parents have a lot 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 to do other than i suppose always trying to look after the, the athlete's nutrition perfectly like i really understand that so it's probably the player being aware of that and when they're at home making good food choices and helping out that if helping whoever's preparing their food with them because then that's how they're going to learn best i suppose for it um I suppose the bedtime is just getting into the routine and it's a lot easier to stay in the routine while it's the school year, different Halloween and summertime and things like that. It can go a wee bit off, but it's trying to stick to the routine as best as possible. Um, and then the last one, I suppose, uh, that I said was when and what to eat. So it's the player educating themselves by reading or, I suppose, looking at different things like this, uh, webinars on the internet on how to prepare prepare their body with with nutrition better so like there's lots everyone knows there's lots of different books and that out there just one for example that i would have looked at myself as the daniel davy nutrition one and uh, just good examples of easy meals quick that people can make up that can have a huge effect on on their performance okay so just in summary of the the webinar that we're after working through um, build your house up strong so that's starting from the morning time from the breakfast throughout the day and then especially once after a tough training session or game then that's really when we start building the foundations for recovery getting our water getting our post-match meal or whatever it is into our body to start taking the recovery process off the, off the list and um, knowing what you're putting into your body is i suppose just an education point of view lots of parents would know already what's the best foods for their for their kids to be eating okay so i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people already along the right track and um, make sure if your recovery window so that's after our training sessions or our games just that we're getting taking those things off the list getting our our water in getting our protein in getting our carbohydrates in to start building up the body that it's not dipping into the fat stores and then uh failing to plan is planning to fail so like I said a couple of times, it's just being prepared for these types of things. Um, it's being prepared for these types of things that if, look, not every day is going to be perfect after every training session, after every game, but it's it's just aiming to get as many days as possible that we're building that back up because that's going to how that's how we're going to have as big effect on a performance as possible, all right? Um, so just a couple of questions just there, folks. Hopefully I can... Okay, so I'll actually I'll pass this over, guys. Um, Chris has been Chris Conroy has been keeping an eye on the chat box here, so Chris has noted a couple of questions and he's gonna he's gonna answer them for you now. Okay, if anyone else has any um any other questions, please put them into the chat box and we get through them now in the next in the next couple of minutes. Okay, thanks very much for listening up this evening. Okay, folks. Uh, thanks to Dan there. Uh, top presentation. Uh, so, again, just a few questions here. Okay, so I think one of the questions is uh, how to manage an evening meal when players come home from school and rush into a game or training. So, probably something to do there is maybe again, if rush rush into a game or training, is to make sure that we're fueled the night before, and then getting our fuel during school school time as well. So. Make sure we're getting our plenty of carbohydrates tonight, the day before the game. So that's a big thing. A lot of players miss out. They might try rush the carbs in, so get a big bowl of pasta in, which isn't what we're looking for in terms of nutrition. So probably the best thing to do with that is gain, get get our, oh sorry, get our carbohydrates, get our proteins in the night before. Get lots of uh, 
get basically your calories in the night before and then during school time as well and then maybe just a light snack so it could be maybe something something simple like rice pudding bowl of Weetabix with honey or porridge and honey something small something that's not going to sit in the stomach before training or a game so uh, and then just another question here as well uh, uh, if players have a game at say 12 noon on a Saturday four hours beforehand is 8, 8 a.m what would you recommend to eat and when is a simple breakfast enough would you eat sometimes particularly the night before yeah so maybe looking at that if a game's at 12 noon again not the nicest time to have a game or at 11 o'clock in the morning so again we're probably looking at a small breakfast of like maybe Weetabix or Weetabix or porridge or maybe a bowl of cereal at 8, 8 a.m or even 7 7 30 a.m and then maybe if a player still feels tired maybe go back to sleep or get a nap for a half hour and then we're looking to fuel about two to three hours before the game so that's when maybe we get maybe something simple like a uh, bit of bagel uh, beans and uh, egg getting then getting a proper meal in then so try to aim to get two meals in before the game uh, again not always easy but again it wouldn't go down the line of three hours before a game trying to get as much food in as possible so try break it up that maybe at 8 a.m. or 7:30 a.m. Get up, small breakfast, get hydrated as well. So get plenty, get maybe get a pint of water in along with that, and then then the two two and a half three hours before the game, that's when maybe get a bit of more of a substantial meal in. But again, something that's not going to be too heavy on the stomach. So maybe you're not look at again. We always think we need to get the past in before games. Let's think along the lines of a, maybe a, something light like a bagel or toast along with the beans and eggs. And then someone was just asking about that book, Dan, uh, Dan said, he just replied, oh, he replied there. So it's, again, uh, Eat Up, uh, Raise Your Game by Daniel Davey. Again, it's actually a great book in terms of, uh, a great book in terms of when to eat and what to eat. And then great examples of uh, stuff for, great examples of stuff to eat on recovery days and the days leading up to games and then the day off games. So it's actually, in fairness, a great book. And in fairness, he's probably the best in the business. And as you can see, the two teams he works with, Leinster and Dublin GA. So again, that's how much highly regarded he is and how well them teams perform on the day as well. So, uh, so I'll just hand you back here to Dan. That's us done it up. Thanks for that, Chris. Um, yeah, folks, if anyone has any other questions there, Maybe if their chat box isn't working, if they want to take off the mic and ask them, we can answer away. Or if anyone has anything else that they want to just put into the chat box, um, we'll be releasing the, this webinar. So it's been recorded this evening. We'll be releasing it um, hopefully tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. So we'll be getting it out to the club coaches and up on Twitter. So if anyone has any, if anyone has any, I'll put my email address here into the chat box. If anyone has any other questions or maybe is looking for the presentation and hasn't received it, just send me an email and I can send it out to you. Um, if that's it, I just say thanks very much to the lads there, Keith and Chris, this evening for, for their help and hopefully everyone got something beneficial from the from the presentation. Look, I know I'm not a nutritionist or anything like that. It's just best practice and what what we've learned over the years and what works with what I've seen working with different teams. So, as I said, look, there's lots of other people out there, the likes of Daniel Davy, who are experts in this field. So, if it might be no harm in looking into looking up the book or looking up different things, you see it in loads of different websites and uh, of best practice for nutrition. Okay, so uh, thanks very much for this evening and everyone take care.